I'm building a two trailer tiny house. It's time for a build update. I'm pretty excited for this one because I finally get to give you a sense of how these two trailers are going to join together. So first of all, we have these two swinging walls that swing out from the front of the main trailer and nest into the side of the side trailer here. The swinging walls are supported by this structure on the end of the main trailer. This thing was complicated to make because every measurement on this has an important role. The bottom of that main beam there is the height of my ceilings. The top of that has to line up with the top of my roof line and where the flashings will go. And then it needed to allow the walls to swing in and recess in back into the front of the trailer, ensuring that there was enough clearance between my walls to allow for lining, cladding, etc. when they stack back into the front of the trailer. I'll be making these walls weatherproof by overlapping them and stepping them on either end. As you can see, I've added this frame on that will have a flashing that comes out over the top of this around inside here. There's then a five mil gap between the edge of this wall and where that flashing will go that I have a rubber seal that runs full length. This wall will then be packed out another 25 mil and the flashing will come down over the side of this down inside here and along there. That means that there'll be a step in my joint that prevents wind and water being pushed in underneath my seals. It'll be same on the other end where my wall, my swinging wall will meet my wall frames. The swinging walls lock into the side trailer by extending pins out the end of the wall and into these nylon bushes that are recessed into the steel frame of the side trailer. I have linear actuators that are driving solid 20 mil aluminium pins through the nylon bushes in the end of the wall and into my bushes on the side trailer. The linear actuators allow me to move those pins easily because they can get pretty tight and do it without having to pull the wall apart. Once locked in, the pins line up the internal walls and also set the height of my track up the top there at the same as what's on the side trailer. The design of these locking pins still allow for some movement in the trailers while keeping my walls parallel and not putting too much strain on the joint. Also, one of the reasons I've gone for nylon bushes is so I don't get any sound from that movement. So once the walls are locked in, I'll have a sliding roof that'll be in the cavity of this side trailer here that'll slide out over the top of these swinging walls and nest into the front of this main trailer here. My sliding roof dolly runs on 80 mil rollers that roll along this heavy duty door and gate track that I've put on top of the swinging walls and the frame that comes back inside the side trailer. The idea is that the sliding roof will slide over the top of these walls and then nest just underneath the flashings on the end of the main trailer. I need to get that just right so that when it comes under, it'll push up against some seals and use step flashings to stop any moisture pushing in underneath those. That's gonna be a fair challenge to get that right and we'll have to see how it goes. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how the two trailers are gonna join up, structurally at least anyway. Two swinging walls are coming out from the front of the main trailer here into the side of the side trailer and then that sliding roof that comes over the top of my swinging walls and nest into the front of the main trailer here. It's been heaps of work just to design it to this point. There's still so much left to do. I have a lot of work getting these walls built out and getting them swinging smoothly and then I've got to work on that sliding roof and get that thing work seamlessly coming across and sealing up and that's going to be quite a challenge. The next step is actually move on to my uh, support legs for the trailers. Um, I haven't done them yet, mainly because I need to give them some thought. Any leg that's mildly suitable is crazy expensive and I need at least eight of them. So I'm thinking about building my own because I need to be able to get these trailers perfectly level for these walls to work properly. So once I've done the legs and got them on, we might look at perhaps putting down a floor and moving on to the stud frames, but there's a bit to do before that. So hopefully I can get another update video out to you soon and uh, we'll see this come together a little bit more. In the meantime, go build cool stuff and I'll see you soon.